So uh, uh, that's also my programming. I, I don't program perfectly, so sometimes I'm not sure if I should make it uh, required really or make it optional and then I'm, I don't make it required and then it, the function breaks. When you work with the rasters, then it says, hey, you don't have animation. Okay, so what we did in the first block, uh, we created a DEM from points using uh, thin plate splines and then we fitted the sinks and we derived the uh, uh, stream network and we visualize the stream network in Google Earth. Um, well, that's, I assume that you manage, all managed to do that. Um, for those of you who are Ubuntu users, you might have some problems with Plotcam L. Uh, so with some problems I can help you, with other problems it's, uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't maintain Google Earth or I, so I cannot be also responsible for that, and I'm sorry about that because sometimes happens that the Google team doesn't uh, have provide the same functionality on the Windows or Linux. Uh, I don't think they are really linked with the Windows or anything. It just maybe it's a bit more work for them, and they don't want to invest money into open source so much, and then there, there might be some problems. But you you can try and then and. Yeah, let's see. Um, I did I did use uh, PlotCamel on Ubuntu, and I sometimes I had no problems. And then there's a new release of Google Earth, and then I update it, and then suddenly I have problems. Uh, it could be I have to fix the font, or uh, um, uh, has problems. Uh, uh, for example, it, in in uh, in Windows, you can say that the once you install the Google Earth, then all the KML files there. When you say open KML file. Uh, there's a registration of that format in the Windows, and it will always open it with Google Earth. But on the Linux, you have a new installation of Google Earth, and then it doesn't know uh, which with which uh, uh, software should it open KML. Yeah, probably can set it. You can set it, but yeah, you have to set it. In Windows, it's invisible. You just install Google Earth, and you don't have to set anything. Okay, do, would you like me to uh, repeat something or is it so far so good or can I proceed? I can proceed? Okay. Now if you look in the, if you look in the slides, oh yeah, so uh, what we said now, we want to try to do something, uh, we want to try to do uh, some of this processing we did, we want to try to do it directly from R. We want to do it directly from R. So that would mean, uh, for example, when we created this, uh, so I'm going now to R. So we will do now a bit more in R things. So here we created these points. And I did a write OGR. And then we did a thin plate spline uh, to produce the grids. Okay, so I could also, I did that by point and click. Now I can come here in this, this line where I, I write the points and I write the grids. And now I can make a command line to uh, run the thin plate spline interpolation. So how would, how would we do that? Mm, so now we have to do it with code. So now it's no more point and click, look at the so first thing we look here, and so there's this uh, thin plate spline local. So that's the name. And you can see there will be some parameters that need to be set. And uh, this thing is also available here somewhere. I think grid, gridding, and then, how do I make it? Shapes to grid. No, that's not the one. Ah, spline interpolation here. Grid. And we did thin plate spline local. So so you you know you can also access it from here. Okay, now but now I want to write it in uh, R saga. So first thing, how does it work? So first thing I go, I go to my um, to the R saga help. 
So um, if I do R saga env, and then I finish in this uh, help documentation, okay? And then on the bottom of the help documentation, there's an index, index file. Okay, now this gives me all the functions which are available in our saga. Now I can do a search, control F, and I'm looking for spline. And I don't find anything. So there's nothing here as a, so Alex never made something that I can call tin plate spline directly. There is a sync removal, you see there's a sync removal, uh, but I don't see any gridding or there's a grid to points. Um, let's see, grid. Yeah, there's no function where I can go and do uh, splines. Okay, so it means that I have to use the generic, I have to use the generic function to call uh, Saga GS, which is called our Saga Geoprocessor. So for sure I will have to use the R Saga Geoprocessor. So already now I can write R Saga Notice that in, in when you do it from Saga GS, it's also it's ge there's geoprocessing, so we do the same thing. So except now we have to call it with a code. Okay, so now the question is, okay, which, there's the library and there's the module. There are two things, so library consists of multiple modules. So first I have to know which library do I use, and then I can pick up the module. So how do I find that? So now I'm going to this thing that I made for you is this uh, txt file and then I do the search uh, tin plate spline and local. Okay? And I, I find it very quickly. And now I see all the parameters I need to be able to send from R to the R Saga CMD, so the, to the command line. And it will do the same thing that we uh, get if, if we use the GUI. So it's the same thing except we can now automate it and it's, we have it scripted, so there's a history of how we calculated it. So these are all these parameters. Now I just have to see, I have to see what is, uh, how do I call that? So obviously it's a grid underscore spline. So that's the, the library. But I, I'm not sure, I don't see the, the module name. So what I can see, R saga, um, so here before, get modules. So I'm trying to now to get all the modules for the library called grid spline. Mm, don't get anything. I don't get anything because I we're using the 2.2.12 and uh, the uh, Alex they probably changed something and Alex has to update. Um, so we don't we don't really see the list of modules. So we have to do it some other way. <laughs> So let me see, I have it only like this, okay, and I don't see the number here, okay. I can maybe try to uh, figure this out from here because you see, I can see this, I can see this, uh, I can see the library grid spline, 
and I can see list of modules, and I can see this is this will be zero, one, two, three, four, five. So probably it's number five, but I'm not sure. I have to check this now. So now I change this R saga get uh, modules to R saga get usage, and I said, give me for the fifth one. So I get a uh, grid spline interpolation. So that's not the one we need. Let me see now in the file. So that's not what the one we need. So let's try six. Looks like I'm still getting the same one. Good spline interpolation. And what if it's a smaller number? Looks like every number I put, I get the same one. So let me check what's going on here. Yeah, it looks like every number I put, I get the same thing. That doesn't make sense. It's flying. Okay, I have to go around this now. Um, let me just check if I do this. Um, I can. You can also try to save it, just call it a test. And so I can try to save it as a DOS file, a uh, uh, DOS script, and then let me do edit on that. Yeah, there's a, I, yeah, I'm sorry about that. I tried only one function and I didn't have a problem with that. But now I realize that the the Alex has to update the package and we went using the 2.1.2 and he he just stopped at 2.10 and it looks like they changed again something. And so now if I want to get a usage or anything, uh, it doesn't work. I cannot get it. And I, I, it looks like I cannot even guess I cannot even guess the, the the command, so which means that I actually don't know. And in the file that I exported all the functionality, I didn't I didn't export the actual number, so I don't see the number. Ah, oh, no, I see here spline one. Was that the one? Oh yeah, I see it. It's not. It's number one. So it should be number one, sorry. So here, that's the one. This should work, let me see. Grid spline one. Yeah, that's the one, that's the number one. So, okay, sorry. So it is in the file that I exported. It's, it's the number is one. So, which means we can go and, and put this here. 
Okay, so that we have when we do our our geoprocessor, our Saga geoprocessor, we say which is the library and which is the number of the module that we use. And then we look at we can look here what else do we have to define. So we need to define the shapes, and we need to define target. So let's do that. So here inside the list of parameters, I have to put all these things. Yeah, so there's no minus, of course. So we need the shapes, we need a target. Uh, target can be, let's see, it can be one, so that's the target is one existing grid. And then we have a regularization. There's a default, so we don't have to define that. And there's a search radius, so we put uh, 500. Um, and we need the grid grid. So that's where we want to write. So it will be something like this. So the input is the bar x, y, z shape. Target is uh, existing grid. And now I have to just define the grid. Let's see. And I can use, I can just rewrite this. Uh, I can just re rewrite this uh, 30 meter. Great. So something like this. So this will be a thin plate spline with the default settings and with a 500 meter search radius. It's not, it doesn't look, I mean, I, it's a bit of uh, work until I find where I have to write what, but you see on the end, it's quite, it's quite simple, no? You say just a generic R Saga geoprocessor. You will see there's some functions which are even easier because they are in the R Saga package. So you just say, f fill things. Yep. We did derive that, but in this case, we can also just uh, replace it. Yeah, look, it's, uh, it, uh, you, when you say that you want to replace existing files, so what the uh, Saga, our Saga does, uh, Saga GS, it looks, okay, there's a file, and then looks for the grid definition, and then it replaces all, all the values. So you create kind of a dummy file, which just has the grid definition. That's the whole thing. That's the difference. You understand? So here I have, I, I say this, like here, but I can also just save it as a, uh, DM30. Okay, so I just replace it. You see? Yeah, so it can be a dummy file. It's only about it. I only have to know what is the grid definition. And then I can do, I can do this thing. Our Saga Geoprocessor, this should work. Okay, now I get an error message, so let's see what happened.
there's a, there's a serious problem because um, there's a inconsistency between our saga and saga GIS. So it says there's no there's no um, there's no uh, uh, li I don't see any libraries uh, and any modules for that library. So that's a that's a problem. So I did extract it. I did extract the, all the names, and I can see them here. But uh, looks like I cannot call it grid spline. So that's a problem. So yeah, I'm, I'm now stuck here because it's um, they made a new version of Saga GS. They changed something and. Uh, the link is broken. You see this? So the only thing we can do now, if we really want to run this, we have to go back to the we have to go back to the old Saga GS, the 2.10, because that's what Alex says that should work. That's the last time he updated the package. Ah, yeah, no, it's not. It's there's a difference in the command line and. Uh, so for sure, there's a there's a there's a difference in the command line in this thing. No, I meant uh, the description in the right pane there. If you go lower. Maybe you, you mean here? Yeah. yeah. Where you have those arrows, I think you can specify that this is not one of them. Yes, but there there are differences between what you see from the GUI and what you get from the command line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there's yeah, this good thing that you pointed me here also because there are references for how the things are done. You see it's a it's a C plus plus implementation. It's quite it's quite robust, it's quite good. But the problem is that we cannot we cannot establish a connection. Yeah. So as I said this problem is that two, these two worlds are developing independently, so what Alex does and what the guys in Hamburg do, and sometimes they change something and then his package, is, uh, his package breaks. So this is an example of a broken link. Um, so what do we do now? What do you suggest? Let me just try to get the uh, la latest version of Saga GS. I'll just install it quickly just to check that everything works. So, so it says here 2.10, so apparently this one should work. So I get a zip file. I'll just check it for you just to be sure that it's not something even more serious. So I can uh, remove all this.
So I'm now a step back. So I have to uh, uh, retry the connection. Let's see now. Okay, now I have a 2.10. This very quickly, I mean, that's not a problem. Um, but let me see what happens now when I send it. Now it's working, yeah. So, yeah, sorry about that. It's, uh, you know what, I did try, I tried the, the other module I was using. I tried it with the Saga 2.12. And it worked, and I said, okay, pro most probably everything works, because Olaf actually promised to Alex that he's not going to change the, the argument names. But he did change it, and so uh, it doesn't work. So what I'll, I'll give you a time now um, to get the version 2.10. Okay? So we can program, because otherwise we cannot program. And then we'll send an email to Alex to update. Okay, so you have to get the version 2.10, this one here. Sorry? Yes, you, you can use, again, the function I made, but easiest thing is if you just get one of these and just install it. Just either exe or just unzip this one. Yes. Uh, you see what happens. I mean, I can, uh, I can run all the code, uh, but if I get the most recent version of Saga GS, then... There's a, just a bit of delay, I mean, you can look at it that way. So there's a delay until people that make R Saga that for them to update the package. And I think it's only Alex now maintaining the R Saga, so. The good news is it's going to work, you see. So I, I send the process, I send the process from R to Saga GS. The, the bad news is I cannot use the most recent version of Saga GS, so I maybe lose like five new functions or something. Once I get the DM, I can do the uh, hill shading, but now I can do it with a command line. You see, it's actually even shorter now because there's a function that will do this for us. So then I just say, this is the input, input DM and this is the output. And I can also do the sync removal much faster. So I'll just sync, sync, fill sinks. Uh, there's the fill sinks and the sink removal. This one will fill sinks. Okay, I think we need this one. And we can also put in the method. So all these things that I, I was playing with. Uh, so I say this thing. And then the output is out them is I can put DM30 filtered. And I can say the method is. Let's see which methods available. So we use this one, right? Van Gleeuw 2006. So I said this is the method. 
and then I can run that also. Uh, all this stuff you see, it, it's uh, of, of course now I have everything documented, so everything we did is documented. And the last thing will be to derive the streams. So you see how I work with R Saga. I always first I go and check if there's the uh, if the f the wrapper function is available. In this case, not available. Oh, hydrology. So there's nothing about hydrology streams. If there's nothing available, then I have to go. I copy this thing, and I say. I want to do hydrology and now I have to search I have to see where is the hydrology So that somewhere on terrain analysis channels was it and then channel network so let's see Channel network, that's TA channel zero. And what do I need? I need elevation. Elevation is DM30S. FF. Then I need initial grid there are things with which which will work without uh, so there are default parameters but there are parameters that you have to define so I'm pretty sure this one we have to define and then what else do I need Minimum length, we set 20. So it's only three parameters actually we play with. So this should also work, let's see. Yep, it goes through. You see also reports uh, all the process, so you get a bit extra information here. And I can read that now, streams. Oh yeah, I forgot to write the name. So it went and calculated things, but it didn't save. I have to say, I have to say, where do I save this channel network here? Uh, shapes, sorry, shapes. So I say shapes is streams shape. And then I rerun it. And now I can read it. Well, we did actually read it already somewhere. Um, so you should you should get the exactly the same thing, of course, when you use the. So here is the streams, and I can do a plot on that. And then we get this thing. So we should we should get exactly the same thing when we do our saga and when we do uh, so when we use a command line when and when we use uh, GUI should be exactly the same.
Okay, so I, I really, I'm really sorry about this. It's uh, uh, again, it doesn't stop us to use uh, Saga GIS, but there is a bit of sometimes mismatch when they make a new version of Saga GIS. I'm always excited to use it, but then I, I prefer to program, and then I also have to go back and say, okay, doesn't work. Which one do you install? Uh, two one zero. <laughs> yeah, it could be the two one one would work, and I, I'm sorry because I did. Uh, try I tried only one or two functions with uh, with the two one two and I I managed to run it with our saga and I said okay it's all fine but I didn't try more of them and now I see that there with some there's problem but with the uh, one uh, two one zero looks like everything works fine so so I will go and change this to two one zero in my slide. Yeah, so so that you know. Okay. And this one is with the five fifty. Did you manage to reinstall and set up? You, you, you so, yeah. Did you manage to reinstall? Ah. What about you on uh, Windows? Did you manage to get the 2.10? No? Yeah? Yeah. Make, uh, so uh, okay oh, yeah, and the, you, Ubuntu, they, it gets the most recent version always, right? Well, yeah, but you can also, the, the command say, I want that version. Yeah. Uh, then it will automatically, probably, with base, preheat to uh, let oh. it automatically switch out again. Uh, I, will, I will do it uh, by downloading a binary and hope that it not works. Because otherwise, yeah, you cannot run the code. That's the problem, yeah. You cannot run it from R. Anyway, so you see, like what we did, like point click, ta ta ta. So I did in, uh, I did in one, two, three, three steps to compute and then just read back to R. So, so you, can, you can say I could do this now also 100 times in a loop if I have to do it for, you know, so I can automate, so that's nice. And you see these parameters, I mean, you will figure out. So either you look in the R saga, if it exists, a, a predefined function, R saga fuel sinks. So then it's very simple. You just pick up a method and input and output DM. So that's quite simple, you, you know. Uh, but in, for most of functions, you don't have it predefined, but you have to use the generic uh, R saga geoprocessor. And then you say, I want this library and I want this module, and this is the parameters I'm sending. So elevation, shapes, uh, minimum length, and stuff. So you see, that's what happened with, if for example, Olaf changes this argument name, then uh, uh, Alex has to update it, and if he doesn't, then it's broken. I will show you one more thing and then I will let you play a bit with that. So let's see how this is going to work. Um, so in this example, I have a, another example with with the plot KML and I have I'll just run this just to show you and then we'll we'll zoom in on the things. Um, I 
I did in the previous example, I did the thin plate spline, but I can also define a variogram. I can define a variogram and then I can do uh, I can do Krieging instead of thin plate spline. Now I'm doing the Krieging in in uh, R, and this takes a bit of time. I, I run 10 uh, realizations. So I will do uh, Krieging simulations. So instead of, Krieging is also like, it takes maybe two or three seconds, but I can run a, a Krieging simulations, and then I get 10 digital evaluation models. And they're all equiprobable. And for this 10, uh, so I'll just show you how they look like. So it looks something like this. And for me, that's much more interesting to do. You see, each of these has to be reprojected, the 10 of them. And then I can see them in Google Earth. And for me, this is something much more realistic. So let's compare that. Um, so based on the sampled elevations, you can fit a variogram. And based on a variogram, you can do 10 simulated DMs. All these DMs, they're equiprobable. There are small differences because it's, it's, you know, it's, uh, there's lots of points and it's quite smooth. There are small differences. And I will turn also this one. Uh, so they, you can see that there are small differences. Can you see this? this the, there will be small differences, but all these elevation models, they are equiprobable. So they come from a probability distribution. So something that I cannot do with thin plate splines. And that's why I go into R. So that's combining geographical and statistical computing. In Saga GS, I can do splines, I can do hydrological modeling, I can do lots of stuff, but I cannot do, for example, statistical simulations. And so I can do statistical simulation here in R, and I can then uh, produce 10 DMs. Okay? And you can even see here that this is a cross section. I made this transect here. Transect goes from somewhere from north to south. You see this black line? And around this black line, you have all these simulations, and you see what's the uncertainty of elevation. It's, an, it's a narrow thing, but it is there's a different places where you have less points, the uncertainty is a bit higher. So it's a realistic representation of what we actually know about the topography here, based on that point. Yes, okay, so I just show you now, so we go step by step now slowly. Um, Okay, so this code is, if you look at this slide, we, so we do two things in this uh, slide. We do raster brick simulations, so that's what I showed you now. This is a class called raster brick simulations. And if you follow this, so if you follow this plot KML, so I'm following the link. And this brings me here. And now I have to, there's a lot of code here, so I have to go Control F. And I say raster brick simulations, and then I'm here. So that's the code. And you can copy paste all that code. You should be able to run it. See, that's, that's really the added value of this course is that now we are doing, you, you know, you can do some advanced statistical analysis in R, and you can do advanced, advanced geographical analysis in Saga GS, and now we want to combine the two. So this is the advanced statistical analysis and advanced geographical analysis hydrological modeling. So I don't have the hydrological modeling like I have in Saga GS. I don't have anything like that in R, 
and uh, these geostatistical simulations that have nothing like that in Saga GS. You see that two, two worlds. And now the question is, can we combine that? Okay, so try to copy that code and try to run it. Let's see what you get. Here you don't need any Saga GS. Obviously, you can see that. You just need a plot KML and the SP. And the GSTAT package, sorry. You need the GSTAT package. Yeah, did you switch to the 2.10? No. Yeah, I did. Uh, where, where did you put the file? Uh, it says 2.12, you see? It's waiting to see if I'm running. This is on. Ah, but you you did the installation. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's Maybe I have to go and Yeah, you have to you have to empty the folder and remove it. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, sorry about these uh, versions. They are, they are both good software, so I can guarantee that. They're both excellent software, and the Alex did a really help with the making the, the package for it. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, they, they changed some things, and then they have to harmonize them, and we are the victims. Uh, well, pff, well, that's open source, you know. You, I mean, you can just say nicely to Alex, "Hey, Alex, can you update it?" Or, and there's some. I mean, you can search the discussion, and some people upset. Why do they change the argument names? My code is not working anymore. But that's it's open source, so you you don't pay for anything, so you cannot demand or uh, expect that they will do something you the way we need it. So. I think I remember that the Olaf promised that he will. I think he said there was an email on some mailing list. So he said, "Okay, I promise I will try to keep the argument names." But yeah. So try to run this code, and then we will look at the, what we get. So let's try to do some interpretation. All this analysis that you are running now, it's also explained in detail, as I told you in this uh, journal article. So let me get that paper. So it's all explained here. So you can also see, um, I think there's a fitted variable. Yeah, the, these are the fitted variables. There's also uncertainty of the variables. It can also be modeled. And and then based on the fitted variables, you can, what you can do then, because you have, uh, you can make, we made 100 DMs, and then for 100 DMs, we can calculate the stream network, okay? And you get the distribution, the probability distribution of vectors, and then you can aggregate per pixel, and you get something like this. You have a density distribution of, of uh, possible streams based on the uncertainty of the input. The, the methodology used to do something like this is called error propagation methodology. So you, you model with uncertainty, modeling with uncertainty. So we did that and then we finally calculated the, uh, we, we, we mapped actual, so this is a density, density distribution and, and this is one realization. 
So you can see from another study area, we saw that um, if the local relief is, so locally there's more slopes, then it's more exact, but as you get in the plain area, it's more, it starts, there's more higher uncertainty of mapping streams. You see here in the plain, it can get really complicated. But local, it can be, can be fine. But somewhere where you have really distinct um, morphology, then you're like, you know, very high certainty that the stream is going to flow there. It's a very interesting, right, exercise, and it, it's really, it's about combining the statistical modeling and geographical modeling. Yes? Just Did you reinstall yeah, the... See, this is the version I have. Okay, so that looks good. Yeah. But where is it installed? So it is here. Okay. So let's go from the beginning. Um, do the R saga, R saga env. Yep. Let's run this. So this looks good. Finds it. Yeah. Okay. And so, obviously, this one you cannot run because you're missing arguments here, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm not trying to run it. So, so this one. And so, what do we get here then? So let's go up see if there's some error message. Yeah. Ah, it says there's the, all these libraries are missing. But so it's the libraries are missing. So let's look at the library directory. You see, Saga GS modules. Go go here inside. Yeah, you have to look uh, where it's, yeah, it's here. looking for. And see our saga. Yeah. Uh -huh. And look at the modules. Well, I see them all here. Um, but so that let me go back to the go back here and show me one more time the if you go a bit up um, yeah that's the one so because the 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 message is that he couldn't find this DLL right but the DLL is here hmm Um, what is this documents? Catherine documents. Can you go one more time? There's some there's some mismatch. Because this one is called Eigen and document, and how is it called here? Mm. Yeah, Catherine. Yeah, yeah. You see, there's a difference there. This could be the problem. Yeah, that's that's the only thing I see so far. So. Did you manage to make the Google Earth? So we are trying to produce this. Let's try to do that. It says get an error. Let me see which version of Saga JS you have. To do our saga and f yeah, that, yeah, so that's the correct one. Yeah. Good. Now I run this one. Yeah. I'm getting this one. So let's see what's going on. So shapes is this. Yeah. Ah, okay, I think you're missing this. You don't have this file, dem30. Okay. And it's not SGRID, but just without I. Yeah. 
Either you're missing it. Yeah, try now. Okay, good. So th it was uh, just a typo. Any luck with the Ubuntu? Uh, I'm, I'm uh, trying to compile uh, the previous saga, but uh, I have good news regarding Google Earth. Uh, it just works. It works, so okay. Start from the, the okay. Before midday. Ah, okay, um, great. But how do you, I mean... Uh, it runs like, I, didn't, I don't get a time for Open Earth, I only get it for the Google Earth and Android. Yeah, but you didn't, can you, have you uh, created the simulations? Uh, no, because I did not yet install the previous one. Okay, but sorry, yeah. I, that's first. Yeah. I did do that with the simulation. And? And I could also export it as HTML. Oh, no, no. But I, then I don't know, like, when I have the time slot, it's the Earth imagery. How do I get the first one to start? Uh, uh, okay, so I'll show you here a, tr a trick. There's a you have to play with the temporal support. Yeah, sorry. There's also like, there's also tricks with the, with the Google Earth. So you see, I put this temporal support, uh, Monero. So then I can see, you see the how it's like it's dancing, dancing pixels. But that's that's real, that's more realistic, you know. That's really what we know about topography here, just based on the points. That's more realistic. Did you, does it work now? No, because I open the time slot and it's hot. But when I have a slider, I only get the time of the Google Earth and the background. Well, you do have to have 10, you have these 10 simulations, right? If you open the raster brick, you should see 10 simulations. Let's see. Yeah, you got the simulations, okay. Yeah, and then I do export them as .html, no? What I want to uh, see here. No, you, you have to make the, no, not immediately. If you do immediately, then you just oh. get the first one out, I think. Oh, sorry, that's also not Yeah, you have to run it further. So don't run it now, but run f further all the way, yeah, oh, up to okay. here. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now it's going to run. Should run. Because you, what you did, you just visualized the first one. So now you get it. Uh, you get the tr uh, transect and you see the simulations. And it should work. You have to uh, decrease the support size from left to right. Even more. And now you just play with the right one. Yeah. Yeah, you see? Yeah. Okay. So that's. Yeah, I, I do. The only thing I can see in your computer is that here it writes this document something. Yeah, but, but I don't you, have that folder. Yes, that's I that's interesting. That's interesting. Um, I don't know what to do now. Um, I, it's I a, it could be because stuff. you have a German version of Windows. Uh, I think in your case, I will put the Saga GS into some uh, root folder, like a C Saga GS or something. And then you have to specify my environment where the Saga JS is. Maybe try to do that. Because I think you, in your case, it's the path problem. I'm pretty sure. So There's nothing else but just path. Right? Uh, well, yeah. did you install it from a zip file yeah, or from, a, from okay. exe? From the exe. Yeah, then you have to deinstall it. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. And now you can reinstall it. But be careful, you have it turned on, huh? so um, that's also another thing. So, um, because you do have now already, I see you have two copies of Saga JS, which is not, it's not a problem. You have like five copies of Saga JS. It's, it's not a problem, but it can, you can confuse yourself because you don't know anymore which copy you're, you're working with. Mm -hmm. So, did you manage to run everything to get this? Uh, no, because I'm Ah. But, um, I want to know how do you um, make the differences, the elevation differences, larger? 
Ah, okay. So you go to options, uh, tools, options, and you say uh, here elevation exaggeration, and I put 2.5. That's the one I use. And then when I come here, I can see really. You know how you rotate if you. Uh, so if I control control shift, control shift allows you to rotate like this, and also control C allows you to look at a different point. As not control C, uh, so uh, left button shift, and then this, and then control. And left button then allows you to do this. But yes, you have to you have to start rotating. Then you see things. If you don't rotate, you don't see. Question. Do I use it to directly download forms? Uh, which system do you have? You have Windows, yeah, Windows right? Yeah. Um, okay. So now I have the version 2.12 and 2.10, and do I need to uninstall? Yeah, this one is the 2.12, yeah, and it worked. I, I couldn't just change the. Anything. You c you can change also, yeah, and then you reload it. If yeah. you just change, you can just rerun this, and but first you have to remove the files. Uh, I still have to uninstall. Yeah. Yes. Okay. And oh, in, well, if you run the exit, then you have to deinstall it. But if you just uncompress the zip files, then you just delete the directory and you just rerun this. Mm -hmm. And then I just use the library saga, R saga. Yes. I don't yes. need this anymore. I don't need this function anymore. Well, the R saga is a library in R. Yeah. But you need a saga GIS. And we yeah. discovered that we cannot use a saga GIS 2.12. We have to use the one two point one zero. Yeah. So we have we took a step back and then now we reinstalled it, and now we are all back in the game. I think I yeah, hope. And also here, so I did something wrong, but uh, here I saw the the creeping. Yeah. So you said there is no creeping in the saga chess. There is creeping, but you cannot do geostatistical simulations. So you can only do interpolation, but you cannot do simulations. Yeah. You see. And you, it's. I don't recommend using Krieging at all in Saga GS, because they developed it quite quickly. And then also, in in R, you have like so many Krieging possibilities. When you compare like geostatistics that you have in R and in Saga GS, is like ten to one. When you compare hydrological analysis, DM analysis that you have in Saga GS in R, it's also ten to one. You see, so, so then you say, well, this one is better here. This one is better here. So I take this one from here, take this one from here, and I have the best one, the best combination. Yep. Yeah, you go one more, one more, so if you go further. Here, this code you copy, and let's try to run it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then, where do I have to go? Then I said my, and then in the this one. Yep. Right? Yep. And, and now, this is really similar with this. And no, so, so do, now when you I, say, yeah. So now? you have to put this parameter here. You say env. Like no, this? yeah, env is equal to my env. Env. Uh, this is uh, no, 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 no. Inside, inside. It's a parameter. So it's a para env equal to my env. Yeah. And here it's, uh, yeah. uh, try now. Um, okay, I, I'm actually, I'm not sure what's the, is it N or whatever. So you do a, you can have to do a control. Like this? Mm. Uh, no, no, no. Um, no, I, I actually, I don't know by heart. So you have to search it in the help. Yeah. Search the rsaga.env. So you have, no, no, no. Path. It's the path. 
So let's try. Like this? Yeah, I'll try this. You see? So now everything you want to do, like the the R saga, on the end you have to say env is equal to my env. Yes, on the end. So I'll show you that here. So here, when you when you do a um, R saga env, I can save this to let me see. Yeah, so they recommend like this. You say it's here, or you can define it where it is. It's real path, yeah. And then you just call it in the, when you run the, so I use now the default. In your case, you have to define the path by hand. And then if I put here on the end, env is equal to my env. So it's going to do the same thing. But in my case, it's, it's the same one. In your case, you have to specify what your path is. And then every time that you do any processing, you have to use the, this uh, local path. Nadine. Nadine, right? You're Nadine? No? Katrin, sorry. Uh, so, uh, so that's the problem when you, don't, when you cannot put the Saga GS in the directory where it looks for. And I, I'm pretty sure that in your case is that you have a German Windows and um, um, R, R is maybe, maybe you have the R, in, do you have the German R also? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's, your, it's the path. It's the, in your case it's the path and it's because of the languages probably. You know you have also these German uh, characters and some people put them in the file names or directory names and it's going to lead to a disaster as soon as you move to. Uh, yeah, and also empty spaces. So, yeah, that's why I like to avoid all this stuff. I just work with uh, short names, you know, no special characters, no empty space, never empty space in HTML names or uh, file names or anything, never empty space. Question? Yeah. Yeah. But when I, I installed um, Saga, I couldn't put it in uh, the, the folder you you suggested. I yeah. had to put it on the C. Uh, and Sh can you show me your R Studio? And if you do R Saga Env, what do we get? So it, it looks like it finds it and it's a 2.0. So it looks okay. I, I had to put yeah, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's fine. Okay. Yeah, no, it's fine. So as long as the R saga can find it, you, you're fine. So. Yeah, you can also put the path to your saga GS. You can put it in the windows. So because R saga looks for your path. Uh, uh, settings, but the problem is I have to restart the windows. That's, you know, and I don't want to now stop and just restart just to show you that, but if you can trust me, if you put it in the path in your windows settings, it's a add directory which wherever you put it, then you don't have to go and define this stuff. So our saga is going to find it. Now, come on, don't give up, come on. <laughs> Let's see. About, I don't know where it got cut from, actually. Did uh, here? Yeah. So this is not the right path. And then I just said. 
I will say that this file name here, it's too complicated for Saga.js. So rename it and then try to rerun it. That will be my guess. So this one, yeah, just, but you have to, it's easier. No, don't do it. It's easier if you open it in Saga.js and then you know the, yes, this one. Yeah. And you have to say, but maybe just open Saga.js and then open that file. So I will, uh, my guess will be that you're using this file name with its brackets and, and that's in R that's reserved, so. Okay, oh great, great. It's, I think pretty helpful because I, I was used to search. Okay, yeah, actually, I did, I, to be honest with you, I didn't know about this one. Um, but what's your name, sorry? Carolina. Carolina find a nice thing that also within Saga.js you can go to the libraries, right click, and you can say, was it right click? No. Uh, search for, yeah. And so you can search, let's try to do thin plate spline. And I can search anywhere. And it does find it, yeah. You're right. So that's also a way to find it. Okay. Okay, so that was a, a part where I did with the, uh, just so this stuff I did here, that was just, um, so this thing, I did just geostatistical simulations and then I visualized them. Now imagine here when I do this uh, 10 simulations, I could also now go and do 10 times calculate the stream network. Okay, for each of the DMs, but now I don't want to do import it in Saga and do point and click, right? That's now I have 10, imagine if I had 100. So then I, I want to go in and do that uh, much faster. And that's, and that's this chunk of code. So this thing is called here sims. So I just have to change some uh, names. Um, and then here I had the end sim is 10. Yeah, this should work. So let me just check this seems what are they? Yeah, this is just spatial pixels data frame 10 simulations. So I can write each of them, I can write it. And then I calculate, I fill the sinks and then I extract the channel network and then I uh, read it into into R and then I can plot it. So let's see if this works. I'm not sure if it's going to work. It's working, okay. At least the 
fuel sinks It takes a bit of time, see? Ah, what did I do? Streams plot. This is stream plot and this is streams plot. Okay, so this, in my case, this went through. And uh, so this is the, come on. Yeah, so that's, you see, that's uh, 10 realizations of hydrological flow using geostatistical simulations. So that's, that's what we want to do uh, in the last block. And then we have, we covered everything. Yeah, I will let you maybe play a bit with that. So that's the the goal is if you can do this, then then basically you can combine geostatistics in R, and you can combine hydrological analysis in in Saga GS. So it means that you 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 pass this module. I mean, you know how to do that. So I will let you maybe play with that a bit. And we actually have a coffee break in five minutes, and then I will let you play in the last block a bit. Because I think it's good that you you just you try to get there, you know that's the objective. And I find that I have a I have an error in my code. I have to update my package. I use stream and then I use streams, so I messed up. I didn't check it. Um, so, but I will let you play with that a bit. And so let's try to do. Do I have to show you where the code is? Okay, so the code is, if you go to the help documentation and then you search for the B, A, R, X, Y, Z, you get this Barana Hill case. We only, we only look at the code from two, uh, from two help Documents. So one is the B A R X Y Z, and the other is the plot K M L generic method. So we look at these two chunks of code. So we look actually at very little code, but I had we had some problems with establishing the link, and we had to remove the Saga version, so that slows us down a bit. But actually, we're not looking at so much code. So that's this code here, and you see here I made a I made an I made an error. Can somebody see this? I wrote here stream.plot, but here I call it streams.plot. So there's a, I made a typo in my code. Can you see this? So it's my typo. I'm also human, so I made mistakes. So here I call it stream.plot, and here I call it streams.plot, and so this is not going to work. So this has to be the stream, so this has to be stream. Probably it should all be strings because it's multiple. I'll show you quickly how you fix the packages. So I found the error. My package is on the RForge. I go to my documentation and I'm looking for the Barana description. This is the uh, code which is used to compile, and I have to fix this thing. So that's fixed. And I think also this dem sim, I can speed it up because that was also a problem. Mm. 
questions? And this one is the same. And this thing I don't need. Okay, I think this should work. I can check it. Quality control, and this one. I'm running, I'm just fixing it for the for the future users. I'm just checking if it all works now with the new Saga GS and without typos. Yep. That's the variogram. Variogram for the elevation. Yeah. So that's a modern variogram. And So you can see now I'm, I'm maintaining my package. So I'm fixing something, then I recompile it. And as soon as I recompile it, so everything looks good. I checked it. I can make the HTML. I'll put HTML online immediately. So then in about five minutes, you will see the fixed code. So yeah, but I have to compile all the HTML. And then I only take the... So for my plot KML, see when it's installing, it locks a folder. So I cannot do much now. I have to wait till it finishes. Okay, done. 
and then I go here and there was the HTML Baranya. This was problematic. And now I put it in my R development. And the only thing I still have to change is the uh, description. I said this is 4.5 and it's been modified. What now? 17. And now I can do can do a commit uh, fixed typo in the Baranya. Okay, so you see I fixed I fixed the typo I had in my package and I committed the change on the R forge. Uh, so in about five minutes, you when you look at the HTML file, you will have the fix, fix code. So typo is removed, and also in the package, whoever uses the package, they will also get fix code. So it, it's very cheap to fix the problems when you when you know where you have to go. But in the case of Alex, I understand him. He gets tired probably from having to fix the R Saga package all the time. If the guys change something in Saga JS, so. I'll talk to them. I'll, I'll I'll see if I can maybe get them to stick to like to now really uh, lock the argument names and lock some things and so just guys just leave it and then uh, so then the whole the code should be always compatible. Okay, let's go and make a coffee break, and then in the last block, uh, I will let you first try to make the the ten simulations yourself. And then I will go and help you individually. So uh, I want with each one of you that we go and we make these 10 simulations, okay? That's the goal, okay? Okay. <laughs>